So here we go again. First, Steve Bannon defies a congressional subpoena. And now, former Department of Justice official Jeffrey Clark defies a congressional subpoena. Let me say that again. A former DOJ official, Jeffrey Clark, defied a congressional subpoena. Let's talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So here we go again. This guy, former DOJ official and Donald Trump co-conspirator Jeffrey Clark, is following in Steve Bannon's footsteps. Sort of. Put a pin in that. We'll come back to it in a minute. But here's how the Washington Post is reporting it. Headline. January 6th committee warns Trump DOJ official he must cooperate with investigation or it will move aggressively against him. And the article begins, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol warned former Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark that it will take more aggressive steps to compel his testimony after he refused to answer questions Friday during a closed-door interview with the panel. So the reason I say Jeffrey Clark is sort of following in Steve Bannon's footsteps, you know, Steve Bannon didn't show up at all. He just thumbed his nose at Congress, refused to appear on the subpoena, and ultimately Congress voted to hold him in contempt and refer him for criminal prosecution. And Steve Bannon presently is out there footloose, fancy free, unindicted, and probably soliciting money from Donald Trump supporters by bragging that he was held in contempt because he was protecting his criminal associate, Donald Trump. And thus far, we are 16 days in to the Steve Bannon indictment watch, no indictment from the Department of Justice. So Jeffrey Clark is probably thinking, I like my odds. I'm going to go with contempt as well, because Bannon hasn't been held accountable. But Jeffrey Clark went about his contempt of Congress in a slightly different way. He showed up with a lawyer. He pretended like he was going to testify. And then we don't know precisely what went on behind closed doors, but there was probably lots of bluff and bluster and misdirection. And ultimately, he refused to testify. And he left the hearing. Maybe that's a calculation on Jeffrey Clark's part that, well, maybe it's a little harder for Congress to vote me in contempt and refer me for criminal prosecution because at least I showed up and sort of pretended to engage in part. You know, here's what Jeffrey Clark could have done. And if he cared at all about the rule of law, he probably would have done. He would have invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination because he assuredly has one. In other words, if he testified truthfully, he would incriminate himself. He would be talking about the crimes he committed together with Donald Trump. How can I say that? Based on the public reporting. Remember a month or two ago, there was the reporting about these meetings where Department of Justice officials told Donald Trump there is no widespread fraud that undercuts the results of the election. And Donald Trump told them doesn't matter. Just say there was fraud and leave the rest to me and my associates in Congress. Jeffrey Clark joined that conspiracy. He took Donald Trump up on his invitation to conspire to overthrow our democracy. What did he do? He went back to the Department of Justice and started writing letters to the battleground states, Georgia and others giving them a roadmap to overturn the election's results. And he circulated those letters to some of the folks inside the Department of Justice. That conduct by Jeffrey Clark is a little thing we call an overt act in support of the conspiracy. For that reason, and I'm sure many others, Jeffrey Clark absolutely could have told the select committee yesterday, 
I'm invoking my right against self-incrimination and I'm not testifying. And frankly, the select committee would have, have had to accept that and then decide if they were going to grant him immunity or not. But he didn't do that. Instead, Jeffrey Clark tried to come up with some half-baked executive privilege claim which doesn't exist for him. And here's why. Let me be real clear on this because Trump throws around the term executive privilege and it, it seems to, to have become meaningless. You can't invoke executive privilege to hide communications between the president and a guy like Jeffrey Clark about overthrowing democracy or about overturning the results of a presidential election to corruptly retain the power of the presidency. That's not what the executive privilege is designed to cover. It's the exact opposite. There is no viable claim of executive privilege, but Jeffrey Clark didn't care about that. He just threw the term out there and refused to testify. Why? Well, because he's hoping to force this into the courts. And he's trying to bait Congress into maybe filing a suit to litigate the, the executive privilege that he's claiming because then he can weaponize the delay in the court system and run out the clock. Just like Donald Trump did time and again successfully, just like Don McGahn did successfully. That's the play here by Jeffrey Clark. But here's the thing, folks. Every day, the Department of Justice fails to indict Steve Bannon for the crime we all saw him commit, contempt of Congress, is another day that the Department of Justice undercuts Congress's authority and ability to investigate the insurrection in a timely manner. And every day the Department of Justice declines to indict Steve Bannon is another day the Department of Justice encourages guys like Jeffrey Clark to play games and to refuse to comply with congressional subpoenas. You know, I was so frustrated when I read the reporting about Jeffrey Clark playing these games, following in Steve Bannon's footsteps. Mark Meadows appears to be doing the same. He's now bucking his congressional subpoena, not fully cooperating or complying. You know, I um, got on the Twitter machine and tweeted this out this morning. So Trump co-conspirator Jeffrey Clark showed up on his subpoena but refused to testify. Trump's lackeys and sycophants think this whole thing is a game. They use our democracy as their plaything, the right to free and fair elections as their punchline. Hey, DOJ, how about some damn justice? Because justice matters. It matters. Friends, as always, thank you for tuning in to these Daily Justice Matters videos. Uh, if you would like to get them in podcast form, audio only, just go wherever you ordinarily get your podcasts. And if you'd like to support our all-volunteer efforts here, our mission, our content, we're up and running seven days a week, um, creating and, and uploading these Justice Matters videos. You can go over to patreon.com. You can sign up to become a patron and support our efforts and our mission. Uh, if you do, I'll keep you up to speed on the democracy protecting uh, projects that we're engaged in. And I'll also tell you more about our upcoming Team Justice gathering. Uh, we had one a few months ago and it was, um, it was not only a lot of fun, uh, it was a way for me to say thank you to all of the folks who are supporting our mission here at Justice Matters. So if you choose to go over to patreon.com and become a patron, I'll send you some Team Justice stickers and a personal handwritten note of thanks. And as always, friends, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.